Okay, so today um, I figured I'd do a cooking video. It is my dog's birthday, so happy birthday to my dog, officially. Uh, we had a cake and everything and we sang him a song. Hmm. Happy birthday, dear Cooper. <laughs> happy birthday to you. <laughs> okay, but back to the subject. Today, uh, we're going to be making um, a uh, Mexican or Spanish dish called, a, and again, I don't know if it's Mexican or Spanish. All I know is it has rice and it has chicken in it. And it's called a roly con poli, arugula bambugula, uh, skippity dippity bippity boo. Um, I'm trying to pronounce it, but I can't pronounce it. Uh, let me think. Aruz con polo. Three hours later. Arroz con polo also known as chicken and rice. And I hope that I'm saying that right, but again, I don't know. But let's get into it. For this recipe, you're going to need two tablespoons of olive oil, a quarter stick of butter, one medium or two small diced yellow onions, one diced red bell pepper, one teaspoon of crushed garlic, obviously that's more. I'm going to scoop that out when I need it. And one teaspoon of saffron, but I don't have saffron. Uh, so um, my brother actually suggested to use this as Saison Gola, uh, Goya, sorry, see that look. See, I can't freaking say. Three hours later. Saison Goya con Zazafran, okay. Uh, obviously, um, I don't speak the language, but I'm doing the best I can here, okay? <laughs> Jeez. Um, we're gonna need uh, dried uh, parsley, two teaspoons of paprika, two teaspoons of cumin, one teaspoon of chili powder. We're going to need two pounds of boneless chicken, white or dark. Dark actually gives this dish a richness, but I didn't have dark, so I'm going with white. One cup of dry wine, three teaspoons of better than bouillon chicken, three cups of water, that makes the full stock, or you can just go instead of the bouillon, and uh, better than bouillon and the water, you just go with three cups of you know chicken stock. That works too. The juice of one lime, 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes, and 14 ounces of Goya yellow rice. Now they do make a family size, it comes in 14 ounces, but um, I couldn't find it, so I saw two sevens, and two sevens will do just fine. To start off, you're going to hit the start button to turn it on, you're going to then set your instant pot to saute and just leave that on. We're going to start by putting the olive oil in the pot. Like I said, about two tablespoons. It's about an ounce and a half of the olive oil, give or take. You can kind of play that by ear a little bit. You're going to throw in that quarter cup of stick of butter. Going to let that come up to temperature, get nice and melted. So next, we're going to take our onions and our red peppers, and we're going to put that in there. We're going to get those sauteed. We're going to let those uh, go in there for about three minutes or so. Get nice and soft. Keep on moving it around. Keep it going. Already the aroma is just freaking amazing. A 
forgot to mention, while this is sauteing up, one of the ingredients I forgot to mention is this right here. This is just ground chorizo sausage. You can get pre-cooked uh, in links, cut it into discs if you want to, or you can click this up ground when it comes time to do that. But uh, chorizo is definitely an ingredient I like to have in there. You don't have to have it in there, I just think it adds a richness that is really, really good. It's also important to emphasize that at this point is if you did have real uh, saffron, you'd want to add it into the pot at this time. Get it incorporated with the peppers and onions. Okay, that's, uh, that's something you'd want to do. But since we're not incorporating it with real saffron and we're using the Saison Goya, we're just going to put that in when we put in the rest of our spices. And we're coming to that point right now where it's time to put in the chicken and the chorizo. Spices. Saison packages. Putting that in. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to move this around. Now we're not fully cooking any of this at this point. We're just incorporating it into what's already there. Okay. And we want to move this around. We want to make sure that the spices don't like stick to the bottom of the pan. So we're just moving this around, trying to get this sort of like with the chorizo, it's sort of like a ground beef. You know, if you were to just brown some ground beef, I mean, you're not really browning it. You're just sort of getting it a little bit seared. Just getting some heat incorporated into the product. And continue doing that for about three minutes. Three hours later. Okay, so it's been about three minutes. We've been moving it around the entire time. Arm's tired from moving it around. And what we need to do now is put in the white wine. Okay, and we're going to stir that around, get it incorporated. And we're going to leave it like that for about one minute. I'm just going to let it get in there, deglaze the bottom of the pot if you need to. You shouldn't need to if you've really moved things around, but it's always a good measure to deglaze when you have a chance to, do, to deglaze the pot. And deglaze just means scrape the bottom of the pot, if you've never heard that term before. Okay, it's been about a minute, so we're going to add in the three teaspoons of the Better Than Bouillon. So one, and you might as well heap it because it's going to stick to the spoon. Two, three. The water that goes with it. And the lime juice. And also, the garlic. Boom. We're going to give that a nice stir right there. Yeah. Lastly, We want this can of diced tomatoes. Again, just kind of mix it in. Okay, we're gonna let it sit like that until it comes to a bubble. Once it comes to a bubble, that's when we're going to add the last ingredient, which is the rice. Okay, we're boiling, baby. Look at that. So we're just going to give it a nice little stir real fast. Good boil going on. Make sure, like I said, take the bottom of your spoon or your wooden spatula or whatever you're using. I like a wooden spatula because it's flat and scrape the bottom of the pan. Try to deglaze if you can. I feel it's pretty smooth. Now, we're gonna add this rice. 
We're not gonna stir it completely in. We're gonna lay it on the top. We're gonna kind of fold it in a little bit. When it comes to pressure cooking with rice, a lot of times you get a burn notice. Most of the time you can ignore that burn notice. With this particular dish, you can definitely ignore the burn notice. It's gonna go away after about two minutes of, uh, after it comes on. And you might have a little bit of uh, stuff burnt to the bottom of your pot, but it really does come off pretty easy. And it's really not uh, something to worry about. I know this is burn or whatever, but really not something to worry about. And, I, and I'm gonna say that this video is a combination of uh, some tips my brother gave me and another YouTuber I'd like to give a shout out to is definitely Pressure Luck when it comes to pressure cooking. He's got a great recipes. I adapted this recipe from his recipe. So right now we're going to take the rice. I'm just gonna lay it in. Let's lay it across. Just like that. I'm gonna lay it in. And we're only going to take the spoon. We're just gonna fold it like that. We're not gonna super stir anything in. That's pretty much it. All right. And we're gonna take our handle, which by the way, in case you didn't notice, every Instant Pot has these notches on the side of the handle. They fit, um, I mean on the side of the lid. They fit into the handle slot, like that. So the good resting spot. Put this on, close it. And after that, you're going to hit cancel. And you're gonna move this up to pressure cook or set your Instant Pot to pressure cook. You're going to change this setting to 10 minutes on high, okay, and keep warm on, and hit start. All right, so as it comes to pressure, we're going to wait until this pen um, is gonna come up, and the machine's gonna make a noise, and it's gonna start to pressure cook. When it comes time to do the quick release, this pen will drop. Once the pen is dropped, that lets you know uh, the, the lid is safe to take off. That's this particular model. Other models is the reverse. Once the pen pops up, it's safe to take the lid off. So make sure that you read the instructions for your particular model and how it works. Mine explains it right here on the lid, so it's pretty easy. All right, so it just went off now, so um, I'm going to do a quick release. So we push this. All right, so as you can see, the pen just dropped. And by the way, that noise in the background, that's my wife talking. Uh, She's on a, a virtual happy hour. It is Friday night at our house right now, so that's typical. Now, your model might be different. You, the way you do your quick release may be different. Again, the instructions are usually right here on the lid. I gotta be careful, that's a little hot. So now it is safe to open this up, turn it, lift it, and there you go. And I know it looks a little bit liquidy, but it's like a magic trick. Just give it a little bit of a stir, and there's all that beautiful rice. Look at that, oh my gosh, it smells incredible. The sausage all incorporated in. Oh yeah, baby. So what we're gonna do, now normally what will happen is you wanna keep it on, keep warm, but with this, we actually want it to set. So we're gonna hit that cancel button at the bottom, the one I just hit. And uh, we're just gonna let this sit for about, we're gonna let that sit for about five minutes. Okay. It's been about five minutes now, and we're gonna give it a stir. And that just lets it set just a little bit, and look how velvety and yummy that is. That looks great, oh my gosh. That looks great. So, we're ready to plate some of this stuff. Let's give it a little bit of a try here. I really made this for tomorrow, so it's really going to be in tomorrow's dinner. Stuff like this that has a lot of spice incorporated, chili, this type of dish right here. It's really good if you let it cool all the way back down and heat back up. That lets the spices incorporate back in. Okay, so we're gonna give this a try now. It's still pretty hot, pre even though we let it set for the five minutes. There's a good amount there. I think you think you probably serve about 10 people with this easily. Um, it's a lot of food. I try to get a little chorizo, a little bit of chicken in the bite here. Just give it, give it a little tasty, shall we? Give it a little tasty. 
Oh my. Oh, Lord. That is easily one of my favorite things I've ever made. Oh my gosh. I'll tell you what. Do me a favor. If you like this kind of content, like the video, subscribe to the video, and I'll bring more of these types of things to the channel. Right now, I'm, I'm just kind of bouncing around trying to figure out what I like to do. Did a yard project. Now I did a cooking project. Uh, I don't like painting, uh, even though I'm okay at it. Uh, so um, I'm not going to do a painting uh, project because that will just make my wife want me to paint more rooms in the house. So I'm not going to do that, baby. But um, join me on more of these, what I like to call adventures. It's another little nod to one of my favorite YouTubers out there. Hey, TW. And uh, I got to say... Uh, I gotta say to ATW, it's good. I really like it. It tastes yummy. He does a much better impression of Arnold than I do. Anyways, give it a like. Give it a subscribe. Love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.